Hi, GBC. We know that 2020 has been a tough year for everyone. Uh, we're all processing lots of information, not able to meet together as much as we used to. And as Ryan and I were talking about that, we thought one thing that could be helpful just in body life overall is to send out some devotional thoughts via video and uh, things that are edifying that we could reflect on during the week. Each week when we um, prepare a sermon, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it into the sermon itself, whether that's because of time or just trying to focus on certain things. Um, and th this past Sunday was one of those for sure. And so I wanted to just share a few thoughts with you that I found edifying as I've continued to think on these things. Last Sunday, we looked at John 16, 25 to 33, and Jesus was uh, telling his disciples uh, encouraging them to go forth as those who are loved and courageous, um, loved by the Father and courageous and taking heart because of Christ's victory over the world. And one of the things that we looked at in particular was this confidence that he gives them of the Father's love for them. And I, I don't know about you, but it can be a difficult thing to um, have that confidence. And one of the things that this passage addresses in particular is that confidence is coming in the midst of their pending failure. Within a few hours, they're going to desert Jesus. And as we think about that, one of the things that can most tempt us, I think, to doubt the Father's love for us is our own failures. Um, maybe even since Sunday, you've become acutely aware of ways that you fail in your faith. It could be an ongoing struggle with sin and you gave into it again. It could be that you continue to worry or have doubts about your faith and that makes you question if, if God the Father can really continue to love you um, the way that the Bible says he does. It could be that we're fearful when you thought you should have spoken the truth. It could be that you were brash and harsh when you should have been more Christ-like. Whatever the failure has been or is that, that makes you doubt the Father's love, this passage actually brings a ton of encouragement to us as we think about our failures. I came across this quote by theologian C.H. Dodd, um, and what he's talking about is Jesus' question to the disciples when he says, do you now believe? And it's kind of a check on this confidence that they have, and he's kind of um, situating that within their coming failure. And the quote says this, the damping down of an enthusiastic confession of faith might seem surprising if we did not remember that it corresponds to a constant pattern, not only in the fourth gospel, but elsewhere. And this is what he says. It is part of the character and genius of the church that its foundation members were discredited men. It owed its existence not to their faith, courage, or virtue, but to what Christ had done with them. And this they could never forget. And so this passage is just another reminder to us that our failures are no surprise to God. And that the important thing for us to focus on and to never forget is what Jesus has done for us and what Jesus is doing with us as his people, as he builds his church. Um, to keep in the forefront of our minds Jesus' successful work as he's one who's sent by the Father out of his love for us. And that's what gives us confidence in the Father's love for us. And one of the things I've been thinking about is how do we grow in that confidence in the Father's love? Some is thinking about this passage overall, um, but another practical way is learning to read our Bibles more carefully, learning to become more attuned to the language the scripture gives us of the love of the Father and how that relates to Jesus in particular. I realized in prepping the sermon uh, this past week that when I think of Romans 8, that glorious passage about God's love and what can separate us from it, I think of it primarily through the lens of Jesus' love for us. And even though it talks about the Father's love, it's not really on my radar. Um, Verse 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And so we can think of Christ's love. But we have to remember that the whole thing is sandwiched by speaking about the Father. Um, it says in verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? 
It's really since God is for us, who can be against us? And then it concludes by saying that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And we can just roll across those words and not really think about it, but it's the love of God the Father that we cannot be separated from because we are in Christ Jesus. And so really it's just another way of saying what Jesus assures his disciples of in John 16. The Father himself loves you. And what he says later in chapter 17, you, Father, loved them as you love me. Um, And so learning to slow down and to think about what the text is really saying can be helpful for us. And then if that's something that you struggle to believe and live out of, which I do um, day to day, is uh, a helpful thing can be to pray those things back to God. That we can pray saying, I know your word says that you, Heavenly Father, love me, but I often don't feel that way. Will you help me to believe it? Because I know it's true from your word. And to, to think according to this and to learn to, to view life through the lens of a confidence in your love. So hopefully those are a few things that can be helpful just as we seek as God's people to grow in our confidence of the Heavenly Father's love for us in Christ Jesus.